you can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. Hello. Oh, hi. Welcome to Relax the Podcast. Whoa. I'm Colleen Ballinger. I'm, I'm Eric. You're Eric and we are married and this is our podcast. H- Hooray. <laughs> so um, I, in case you guys are wondering, I'm still pregnant. That is still happening. Wait, are we, we are still epi- married. Are we starting the episode off with a bow, bow, bow. bump chick? No, we are not. Oh. We're starting the episode off. <laughs> so, you're the worst. I will say this with this podcast. You, you've never legitimately yes handed me. That's not just you, this podcast. You, that's you, our. Uh, you that's know, life. you know, know me. It's not even no and. It's yes and. It's you. Anything I, I do like that, you're just cannot, like you just shut it down immediately. No, we cannot start an episode of an audio podcast with a visual bump I think check. a lot of people watch this on YouTube. Sure, also. but now you know. You got to well, stay tuned if you want to see the bump if check. If it's an audio medium, sure, but that's <laughs> then your job to audibly describe the <laughs> bump check. See? Oh my God. I can say I can say this about it. It's uh, it's large and in charge. It is large and in charge. It grows every day. Literally... And, uh, the other day, every day, and the other day you woke up and you're like, I have an Audi. An like, Audi here it is. Yeah. Maybe the other day, yeah. It's, can we see it? No, it's my <laughs> Audi. Oh my god! I'm can so you describe it audibly? Your Audi. It's an Audi belly button. It, well, I kind of have. Imagine like, that, folks. It was a big Audi when I was pregnant with Flynn. Uh huh. And then when after when did that happen with Flynn? At what? Oh, point? way later, third trimester, maybe the end of the second trimester. Right. Um, this one, first this day, is, day one. <laughs> I know. Um, but uh, yeah, so s- first of all, let's talk about who needs to relax. Then we'll get to our bump check, okay? So stay tuned for the bump check. Okay. We're going to talk about who needs to relax this week, guys. Lovey? For oh, me? Yeah, who needs to relax? For me, who needs to relax uh, this week? I'm going to say, uh, how do I phrase this? Aggressive customer service. I feel like yours generally... I'd say 80% of the time has to do with some sort of customer service or the <laughs> service really? industry. Have I done yeah. this before? Uh, I just think know your audience. A lot of people, when they're in need of customer service, don't, don't need a full immersive history lesson. We went to, we took our son to get ice cream the other oh, day. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, now I know where you're going. The, uh, the gentleman who, who worked at the ice cream shop, it's great if he's proud of his product, if he loves talking to people. Uh, but we were there specifically for, a child sized scoop of chocolate ice cream to put in a cone. Thank you, sir. Here is your money. Thank you for, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and, and good day, sir. This man. That was not the experience we got. Unprompted went into uh, um, as if we were at a museum and we had paid for a tour guide the history of ice cream. Of his G- ice gelato, cream. Gelato, sorbet. It was the history of his ice cream because the history vegan, of ice cream would have been more interesting. Um, and just. Um, to the point where he was just... He was just reading the menu. It's like, it's like if the, the waiter at Denny's came up to you and, the, you know, Denny's is all a picture menu and the waiter just described every photo that you were already looking at and interpreting with your brain, yet still described mm-hmm. every single photo to you to the point where our son, who we've built up this experience saying we're taking you to an ice cream store. He loves ice cream. He's very excited. Halfway through this man's uh, monologue goes... Dada, let's go outside. Like he didn't, he was he like. He didn't even want ice cream anymore. He didn't even, he was uh, turned off from the whole idea. And I think that that broadly can be more relaxed is just uh, customer service. I don't want it. I well, and you know what? <laughs> I appreciate customer service and I know people are working hard and like all that, but well, yeah, of I'm going to piggyback. But there's a limit. There's can a I, limit here. Can I here. piggyback off of you? For a second. Are you piggybacking me? <laughs> <laughs> I hate when people say that in meetings. <laughs> Can I pig- I'm going to piggyback. What is this? A Zoom me. call? You gonna? Okay. I'm going to piggyback off you there. Yeah. Because what I don't like is aggressive customer service when I'm shopping for clothes. If I go to a store and someone comes up to me and goes, "Can I help you find anything?" That's perfectly well, fine. That's very kind. Thank if you, you say to me, Wait. "If you say to me, can I start a fitting room for you?" I immediately throw everything I'm holding down on the ground Whoa. and I walk out. <laughs> Relax. You may not start a fitting room for me. I don't mind that. I don't mind that, or, and I don't yeah. mind if people say like, "Can I help you find anything?" I think that's nice. That's fine. But then 
when I say, no, I'm good. Thank you. And then you go, are you sure you want me to help you find something? No, I'm good. Thank you. Oh, that's really cute. Do, we're actually having a sale on such and such and such. Do you want me to show you? No, I'm actually good. So what are you, what are you looking for today? Just looking around. Anything in particular? I'm just looking at, like, that is why I'm this? like, please leave me alone. How about this? You're, you're picture yourself. You're at a, a store. I know you're, you're I know you're, already you're what by, you're, 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 you've found the, the you've been helped. You were nice. You were pre, you were like, thank you for the customer service. You've dealt with it. You're now paying for the item. Uh, hey, would you like to round up to uh, support this charity? Sure. Uh, also, we have these items where they're only for purchase for five dollars. Okay. Um, well, okay, okay. Yeah, that's okay. That saves something, someone. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll also buy this thermos. I don't need. Okay, and just so you know, you do get another one for fifteen dollars if since you're purchasing this. No, I have everything. You know what I that's mean? That's fine. It's like, I don't like the membership things. We're like, do you want to sign up for our membership? Where we'll no. send you seventy emails a day. Can we email? Can day? we email you your receipt? No, just print it. Okay, because are you sure? Because you can save twenty percent today if we. I know. I hate, they always. They always. And I know. I down to you. They guilt I, you. They go like. They go like. Do you want to join our membership program? And you can. You can save twenty percent. No, I'm good today. You can save 20% off. Like yeah. I would say it like I'm a totally insane. Lunatic for not wanting the 20% wanting, off. But you know what? It is worth paying the extra 20% to not get all those all emails. All those emails, yeah. And also, <laughs> I, I, under, I have worked in these industries. I understand that this is their- They have to say this. They things. have to say this. They're required. But why do I have to say no? <laughs> I'm my- Because, you know what I mean? Why do I have to say no to eight different questions? When I just, uh, I'm already, I'm already a, a, you know. You just want to buy a shirt. And I'm buying a shirt. I'm, I'm a patron of your business. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the thing you want. You, you want customers. I'm a customer. I'm buying the thing. Why do I need to also so you like, want be guilted and turn aggressive customer service to relax. I agree with that. I don't, There's, I don't think customer service. I feel like they're just doing their job. But when it's like, I'm very obviously not wanting to talk to you I anymore. I said aggressive. Yeah. I didn't yeah, say, no, I didn't say, say just, I just, just yeah. didn't say customer service. Yeah, yeah. You did say aggressive. You did. Cause sometimes as a customer. I need that service. <laughs> I know. Um, uh, that was. That I just was don't fun. like to be hammered over that. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, read your audience. Like, you know what I mean? You can tell when people. We got a two year old. Yeah, when we're in an ice cream store and the two year old's like, Daddy, I want to leave this ice cream store because yeah, you're, you might... you're reading us every item on your menu and explaining why we can't look at the ice cream. And I appreciate the passion, but I'm just saying, yeah. like, we're already in the door, man. Mm -hmm. We're here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you want to know who I think needs to relax? Okay. Week? <laughs> I already mentioned it. Um, this one is like you already mentioned it. I mentioned to you in the car yesterday because I just oh. remembered when this used this used to happen to me all the time, but I don't drive anywhere anymore, so it never really happens. You guys need to tell me, listeners out there, if this happens in other places. But in Los Angeles, sometimes late at night, sometimes during the day, but usually late at night, when you're on the highway, a cop car will get in front of all the cars and swerve slowly i'm talking like five miles an hour on the freeway with their lights creating on. traffic creating traffic mm -hmm. for so like slowing down 30 minutes slowing down the flow of yeah traffic. they slow yeah. down the flow of they traffic turn on their lights and they swerve through all five lanes to get everyone behind them to slow oh, down that makes uh, me it does rage oh it makes me rage i hate it so much it all, because it always happens like right in front of you. You know what I mean? You're always like, you always get well, caught Well, because in you know what's the worst thing in the world? Traffic. Uh -huh. So you're going to make it on purpose? Like I get when there's traffic and there's like, well, oh no, there's a horrible accident. People need help. Something happened. Like I understand, but like you're just making traffic? For hey, what? You mind if I piggyback on this? Yeah. <laughs> Why would you <laughs> do I piggyback such it? a thing? Uh, I, I would say, I have that. you done your research here? Like do Absolutely you, not. Yeah, I would say, <laughs> I would say, Maybe there's a reason. I'm I've I know that one time when it happened to me, I was stuck in this traffic and I illegally this was many years ago. I illegally looked up why they did that and it said to slow down the flow of traffic. Yeah. So is, why would you do a, that? So it's a, as a safety measure. So what's who's it's why? Because driving is dangerous, man. What? You, How, can I piggyback on you for a yeah, second? Piggyback. I'm going to look this we, up get to a point where we're like, we got to get these places. So we're going to develop this machine with four wheels and just give lunatic 16 year olds a license to, to floor it as fast as they can go in these. How about cars, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, a big one is look like, at just... look at why they do it. Well, did you know that people like fully like 
traffic, like there's some things, no matter how many times you explain it, people don't understand the concept of traffic. No, what? Like, wh why don't we is all just like drive? like hearing a voice in your no, head like, thing? No, think about it. Think about like all those cars, like think about when you're in traffic. If everyone collectively just went, uh -huh. we'd all go. I like the same, uh, yeah. It might yeah. be slower or faster. But like, but why don't we, we, all, we, all, we all just go? Because somewhere. Uh, an accident or like no, someone's but, car broke but down or a but obstruction. But eventually you get to the end of traffic and you're like, what well, was that traffic? You know, like it's like well, that happens there. all the time. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, why don't, why were we all going? Why so didn't we all just go the, the good speed? Yeah. This is something that I scream audibly in the car <laughs> frequently. Okay. Why would a police car zigzag on the highway across five lanes for a few miles, blocking the traffic and forcing cars to drive slowly? All right. I just, this is, I just found this. It's called a traffic break, a patrol car with lights and sirens on weaves, uh, weaves across all lanes rapidly, gradually slowing it so that traffic stays behind them. It's used when there is an accident. Okay, now I feel like an asshole. It's used when there is an accident, high risk might. car stop, I thought you might. or other hazard ahead. If traffic runs up on one of these, suddenly there could um, there's a good chance cars won't have time to stop and blah blah blah. Chain reaction could occur. Okay, so it's for safety. And now that I'm an asshole. That was my guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's why. That's why immediately I was like, I get okay, that I this is a. Uh, a frustrating thing for you during your human experience as it is it's, it's, has it's been for mine selfishly frustrating as well because there's never a time when you're going somewhere that you don't want to get there faster um unless you're someone who just likes driving on the highway at night in which case you might be a prowling serial just, killer um but it is if it's for public safety uh i've never here's the thing is I, this has happened to okay. me many many times and i've i've always been near the front where like the police car is and whenever we start going a normal speed there's nothing there so like that's why i've always been like is it just to slow us all down this is I think so annoying i think it's the um them telling us we need to relax you know what i, I think mean? so well, whoa you know what this is the first relax that's kind of told me to swung relax back around i appreciate you telling me to look it up because now if that ever happens to me i will have empathy for whatever is going on and because like whenever just take a breath man because whenever I see like an accident or an ambulance or anything like that, I never am like angry. No, I'm you're like, always, always like, like I hope, oh, hope, I hope everyone's, everyone's okay. okay. Like, I, you know, like I always like my mom always taught me like the second you hear a siren, you pray for whoever's in there. Like you, you just always a moment for those people and to like send positive anything you can. Because like what a horrible thing to have to go through. So I've never been annoyed at an accident. I've never been annoyed or bothered by like any sort of thing like that. So now that I know that's what it's for, now I feel like a jerk every time I've been upset and then I use it as a relax today. But yeah, are you, do you think you're growing as a human though through this? Like is this? Physically, I've probably grown an inch yes. since we started this podcast. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and maturity wise, you know what I mean? Um, Who doesn't want to be a better person, right? A this lot is... of people it seems. Oh yeah. <laughs> Am I wrong? I feel like there's a lot of people who don't want to be better people. I think they just, I, I do, and I appreciate you saying, why don't you look up the reason? This is why you're such a wonderful partner for me. You're like, hey, you kind of sound like a dick. How about you look that up? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it worked. It might be for a reason. Feel, yeah. Now I feel really bad, and also I will never complain about that again. Thank you for helping me be a better person, my love. Hey, you do it for me every day. I hope so. Do I? I what? don't think I do. <laughs> what do you mean you hope so? <laughs> anyway, you know who doesn't need to relax? Kind of like an ultimatum. Who? Our, next, our first sponsor. Oh, who's that? Our very first sponsor of the day. It's a good one, love. Okay. You want to hear about it? I sure do. Well, I got a lot to say. It's exciting You're stuff. Not saying much so far. Well, here it comes. Okay. If only it was possible to get a list of great candidates the moment you post a job online. That would be wonderful. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Well, it is with Indeed Instant Match. The moment you post a sponsored job, you get quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your sponsored job description. How awesome is that? It's great. Say you're looking for a customer service representative who knows the right amount of customer service <laughs> to allocate yeah, to customers. Yeah, see, here you go. When hiring gets hard, you need Indeed, the job site that makes hiring incredibly simple. Just attract, interview, and hire. In fact, with Indeed, you can do all of your hiring in one place, even interviewing. Don't just hope your perfect candidate will find you. Indeed's hiring tools help you cut through the noise to hire faster and smarter. In fact, Indeed Instant Match provides a list of quality candidates whose resumes are on Indeed the moment you post a sponsored job. 
Indeed Instant Match immediately delivers quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed fit your job description. You can even invite them to apply right away. And according to Indeed data, candidates you invite are three times more likely to apply to your job than those who only see it in a search alone. Plus, with Instant Match, Indeed data shows 90% of employers get quality candidates from Indeed's resume database as soon as they sponsor a job post, according to Indeed data. What do you think of that? Some quality data. That's some good stats. Data or data? What do you say? You can say either. I think it's interchangeable. Data, data. Well, I, I mean, that I could be thing. like data. Oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do, do, I, do I say it wrong? I thought it was interchangeable. I think it I think it is. I just wondered if it was like a coast versus coast thing. Data, data. I mean, you could say data either. What do you say? I don't know. I'm blacking out. <laughs> <laughs> According to Talent Nest, Indeed delivers four times more hires than all other job sites combined. Join more than three million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. This is a great way to hire someone, guys. If you need someone quick, someone who is exactly perfect for the job, come on, check it out. If you're looking for someone who will work hard, like our son sometimes says to me when I'm Emptying the dishwasher, he'll go, you working hard, Dada? If you're looking for someone. Like Flynn? No, like <laughs> me, who'll work hard. Oh, you, the go, hard worker. Go to Indeed. Go to Indeed. Check it out, guys. Uh, get started right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post oh. at Indeed.com slash relax. Get a $75 credit, guys, at Indeed.com slash relax. Relax. That's indeed.com slash relax. Offer valid through September 30th. Terms and conditions apply. Ooh, I've always, why don't you let me say, I've always wanted to say. You can say, you can say. Terms and conditions apply. Okay, so you guys, we got, we had big news that we announced last week. It was like a big day the other day. Yeah, we announced that um, we know we're having a little boy and a little girl. Yeah. And that uh, is very exciting. I've been... Dying to find that information out since uh, I got pregnant, but especially since we found out we were having twins. So to finally know that information is like so, so exciting. And I just have to say, we wanted to talk about this a little bit because we haven't talked about it on the podcast. We kind of always talk about big events, you know, in our lives. Yeah, surely you've talked about this online elsewhere, but we haven't here. If you haven't gone and watched my videos on this, um, we did a, a video It was like a gender reveal with like our family members. And then uh, I've talked about it quite a bit in my vlogs and whatnot. But I just want to throw it out there here today that uh, we did. We did not care. We do not care. It doesn't matter to us. The genders or the sex of our children. And if one day that is changes or is incorrect, of course, we will love and accept them no matter what. What it is to us, what it does mean and and. And offer to us is is just any kind of infor- like mm-hmm. information, biological information about these two human beings growing inside your body that we don't know. Mm-hmm. Like we, it's 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 us like sussing them out. Like it's it's just any it's a bit any of information, information that we can have because we have these ultrasounds right. where we're like, well, that one looks shy, and that one mm-hmm. looks like a bully, and that yeah. <laughs> and, and an insane person, and like and um. Yeah, it's just like it's more it's just more tangible. I mean, it is every day that we're like, what do you think they're going to have brown eyes or blue eyes? Because Flynn has blue eyes, which was totally shocking. And I wouldn't care either way. But if they could tell us that right now, I'd, I'd be like, know. tell yeah. us. Yeah, exactly. So we can get we to do know. not care if they're I just want to know them more. I just I, I just uh, I'm just, yeah. it's like I'm so excited. to. It's just it, it doesn't matter. But it's still all. exciting. And we would be excited no matter what, um, no matter what the outcome is. But I think for us, it was it was so exciting to find out that we were having a boy and a girl um, because we did not think we were going to be having a girl. And so to find that information out was like shocking. It was so like, yeah, it was my, shocking. Yeah, all my <laughs> Vegas bets were on two boys. Yeah, for we sure. Yeah. Everyone thought that just so. So the reaction to finding out we were having a little girl and a little boy was like, what? it was just mind blowing. It really blew my mind to the point where the ultrasound tech, when she said it, that we were we definitely believe, having a girl. We didn't, we didn't believe, believe her. her. We kept going, are you sure? I don't believe you. Are you lying? Can you check again? Are you sure? Like we she really said it like didn't eight believe times her. and then she finally said it's definitely. Mm-hmm. Then I was like, even, and we're like, okay. And I feel like I believed it then. But then as soon as we left, I was like, I don't know. She could be I wrong. still kind of feel, okay. So this week we have this big doctor's appointment with this, our like really 
Uh, Paleontologist? Yeah, I think so. Uh, this week, and I think, is it? I don't know. That kind of sounds like a dinosaur doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No. She's fancy. <laughs> She's really fancy. She probably went to school for 12 years. She measures all the things. And that's the appointment that they told us, like we were supposed to find out this week, at the end of this week, what we were having. Couldn't wait that long. And we couldn't wait that long. So we went to this like little cute place you can pay to see pictures of your babies One of the early. 4D, like, yeah. So anyway, we're machines. supposed to find out this week. And I still kind of feel like we're going to go in and she's going to be like, you have two boys. Do you kind of feel that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if enough about like this the science and training they have for those technicians, like an ultrasound technician, to know how. But I know that I wouldn't, in any way, give someone, especially an expecting mother, definitive information like that. Unless it's happened I was, before. Unless I was very sure. Yeah, I of course it has. Yeah, I'm I'm al- I'm also fully expecting that we go this week, and she's yeah. like, "Yep, two boys." And, I don't know. Uh, Is it's really we like have to backtrack? So yeah, what happened was. Um, you know, we'll kind of give you like what we kind of went through finding sure. out the sex of the babies. Um, you know, we knew we were having a boy. So like we knew at least one boy was in there. Yeah, they could determine one was a boy. Through a blood test, they take your blood. And if they find yeah. only X chromosomes, the XX is a girl, XY is a boy. So if they find a Y chromosome in my blood at all, they know that there's a boy in there. That's how we, we found out Flynn was a boy at 11 weeks pregnant. And so I think I was 12 or 13 weeks pregnant this pregnancy. And we got the call that there was boy blood in there. And our reaction was like super excited. Like, like, Oh my gosh, we know we're having another son. It's so exciting. But we also were like, but we knew this, like, yeah, we just knew we were having in no, more boys. In no, in no world was it going to be too girls. No way. Yeah. There was, it yeah. was, there was no part of my mind that thought that test was going to come back to girls. Like that just was not a thing. Right. That was like zero possibility. Yeah. yeah. And, um, so yeah, it was it's kind of underwhelming in a way it, it was. Yeah. I mean, it was exciting to have definitive, like, like information, like, yes, we know we're having another son. It was like really exciting to know like, oh my gosh, another little boy, like how exciting we just didn't know if it was one or two. Mm-hmm. So we're just like dying to know what the other one was. I was like, one of them is a boy. But it just made the odds greater that it was going to be two boys. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It, it upped those odds. 50%, well, and then we went say. to an ultrasound with my doctor. And she looked and so they call the babies baby A and baby B. The baby A is closest to the exit. And baby A, we it's can in the exit row, if you will. Yeah. The baby A it, at that ultrasound a couple weeks ago looked like a boy. Like yeah, they, very much. They were like, I'm seeing what could I'm be a weenus. S- mm-hmm. And then they looked at baby B, and baby B on the top is always totally insane. It's kind of moving around. Always kicking around and just being hilarious and really, really active. And we've never been able to see. And so um, our doctor couldn't see what baby B was. So it was still a mystery. And so then we went and got an ultrasound together. And that's when we found out that one was a girl. We told our families we weren't going to do a big gender reveal party or anything like that. We didn't. We've even talked when I got pregnant. You're like, I don't want to do a gender reveal at all. And I was like, yeah, okay, maybe not. And so then I think that there's like a certain public, like, like cool guy stigma against them, which I understand because it's, it really, cool guys. I don't know. It's, it's, it's like, let's cancel gender reveal. You know what I mean? Because people keep blowing themselves up with cannons, Mm -hmm. trying to do it in some crazy way Well, and or setting a forest fire. And also like that information, like, isn't really relative to who that human is or or could become because it could be wrong and yeah and it it's doesn't and it does i mean it doesn't matter it doesn't yeah. matter um other than in the sense that like like i said like you got these two babies growing in you like it's like any inf- give us any info yeah. tell us anything you know what i right. mean and like like i said with the eye color thing like they could wear color contacts mm-hmm. and i don't care you know what i mean it doesn't mm-hmm. yeah i would so- love them no matter what of course, of course. So we weren't even sure we were going to do anything. And then my friend Jojo said she really wanted to throw gender things. And that kind of put the idea in my head. We ended up not doing a big gender reveal party. We just kind of like told our family members in special ways, like as we saw them. Yeah, it's fun. It's like a fun. A fun way to tell people like yeah. just some information about these little twins. That, And for me, like pregnancy is horrendous it is awful and not fun and so it's a way to make like a happy fun moment yeah, it's just, when you're physically and mentally we'll be we'll okay. a bit, a bit of, <laughs> <laughs> maybe emotionally is a better word than mentally <laughs> um but anyway but yes it's true um but anyway <laughs> i think for me like i would 
obviously, and I would obviously do anything for Flynn. Mm-hmm. If you told me I had to feel this, how I feel right now, this pregnancy, if I had to feel this for the rest of my life for Flynn to be, I would do it. I'd be like, of course, like I'll be nine months pregnant for the rest of my life. If it means Flynn's happy, like I'll do anything for my child. We, yeah, we did that. I know. And so to, when I am miserable and so uncomfortable and in so much pain, physically, emotionally, and mentally, <laughs> to uh, find out any- Am I going to get talked to about <laughs> no, that after the podcast? Not at all. It's true. It's true. My mental state is, I think we would both agree, the worst it's ever been. <laughs> but I think that like once you, I can humanize these little, these little tiny things growing inside of me, in any way with any information, it makes it, I think I just kept saying that when we found out I'll cry right now because I'm not emotionally stable. But I think I kept saying that when we found out that it was a boy and a girl is like, it makes it all okay. Like I can do this. Do you know what I mean? Like it makes me, it evolves them from like some sort of parasitic thing. Yeah. Like into something like that's, into in the future, something that you will deeply love and care for. And, yeah. and this is wor- is all worth it. Sure. Yeah. yeah the that more, makes sense I, to the, me. yeah, the more I get to know them. Yeah. The more I know anything about them, the more I love them, the more I will do anything for them. It's the same with Flynn. As he gets older, it's not like it's like always just been. I just, I guess I've always loved Flynn and I'd always do anything for him. But it gets more and more intense as he gets older, wouldn't you say? Like the more I know him and the more he his personality comes about and the more I find out about the things he loves and he's passionate about and excited about, like yeah. the more I'm obsessed with him, the more I do anything for him. That's how I feel about these little tiny things yeah. growing in me. Yeah. I found out they were boy and a girl. I'm like, okay, I'll do anything for you. And I would have been that way if it were boy, boy too. It's just, it's just nice to know the information. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. I think that's a good way of describing that like gender, although not relevant is still kind of part of the pro. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And at this stage, that information is, is kind of helpful in some ways. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. And it's exciting and can be fun. Yeah. So that happened this week, guys. It was very exciting information for us we're having a daughter and a son yeah and it was also exciting for our our families to hear about yeah it's the first girl in that generation on my side and on your side Uh uh-huh um there's a girl it's so weird because because well i mean we obviously have bailey i was i didn't finish my sentence my niece bailey is 13 she'll be 14 when this girl is born so in 14 years it's the first girl we have all these boys yeah. We're all amazing and awesome. Uh-huh. And now we're going to have a little girl. Uh-huh. It's exciting. Yeah, I don't know. There's all this it's like uh cuz we've had we have now have a, a son and now yeah, the, all the I don't, all those other things that like I felt like guilty in a way when we found out Flynn's um sex because I I was I, I, I kind of wanted that because it was the human experience that I had and mm-hmm. and could relate to and when you have a kid, you sometimes are, when you're watching them, you're sometimes reliving your childhood in a way. It's like it's this very strange, amazing, awesome experience. And I felt like you got a bit shafted in that, in, in that kind of like um, r- relation, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like relating it to it. Um, but like, I remember that when we, the second we found out that Flynn's sex, I, I grabbed your face and said, are you okay? Because I just, I just. <laughs> I <know. laughs> Well, and of course I was, I was so excited, but there's something really interesting about finding out what you're having that like pregnant women sometimes talk about this. And I've talked about this with a lot of pregnant people that like, you can't really express out loud. Like I was so excited. I, it was so weird when we found out Flynn was a boy. Cause I was so excited. Like I was like beyond over the moon excited. We were having a boy, but I felt like sad that it also wasn't a girl like but I wasn't sad he wasn't a girl and I was really confused and felt really guilty about this like feeling of being like I'm so excited but why do I still feel yeah, this like little pin, pin, like tinge of sadness and my brother said the he gave me the best advice because hmm. he's had 8,000 children and he said he's been through this a lot he said no matter what you're going to have you have been living for a couple of months thinking about the possibility of a life with a son or a life with a daughter, yeah. you don't know what it's going to be. And when you find what it is, when you find out what it is, you kind of have to mourn the loss of like the thing that you were imagining that's now not going to happen. So it's not that I was disappointed that Flynn was a boy because I was so excited. But it was like, right. I had imagined, well, what if it's a girl? You're, and that I had to let like, go You're like, I'm going to like, uh, I'm going to 
braid hair and I'm going to, I don't know, things. Not that whatever. you can't braid a boy's hair. Well, of course you can. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it's so, that's crazy that you say that because it's like in thinking about that and now we're pregnant with twins and one's a boy, like you, we don't have to do that. Yeah. We don't have to, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what's, it's. I know it's a weird way to put it, but like the, the, when my brother said that made perfect sense, cause I wasn't disappointed. I was so excited. I was like, why do I feel also sad? That's not also a girl. Because if I found it was a girl, I feel like I, I would have felt that way about him not being a boy. Do you know what I mean? Like I would have. Right. Of course. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so I was, it was so nice to hear that. And I tell that to any f- girlfriend who's like dealing with that, like, Oh, I just found out what I'm having. And I'm like, I feel awful, but like, I kind of feel a little sad. And I'm like, that's actually normal because we've been imagining a life with this son right. or daughter for two or three months. And then one of those you have to let go of. Right. And it's like such a weird thing that no one talks about. Cause you're not allowed to talk about that. So like, I don't know if this yeah. is going to like make people upset with me for saying those things, but like, um, that's something you're taught. You're not supposed to say anything about when you're pregnant is like any sort of disappointment <laughs> kind of at all. <laughs> Um, oh, well, yeah, but we, yeah, that we're, was, we're grateful. We know we're very lucky. Yeah. Um, we're, we're super stoked. But anyway, we are so excited to have these two little kiddos. We're so excited to know that it's a boy and a girl and our lives are going to change like crazy, which is why we've been trying to like jam pack fun trips, um, into our lives while I can still walk around. Like we keep going to like beach trips and renting random Airbnbs. We have a bunch more fun stuff planned this summer. And let me tell you guys, If you're planning on going anywhere this summer, you should definitely be taking some Raycon earbuds with ya. It's time for our next sponsor. Lovey, did you hear me? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. I had my Raycon earbuds. Oh, snap. He's using the Raycon earbuds. But truly, we've already um, gone to a few different like little beach houses and fun things like that uh, this summer. And in doing that, I still have to edit because I vlog every single day or working on the podcast or whatever. And these have been such a lifesaver, you guys. So if you need to have your earbuds with you, whether that's, you know, you're editing on vacation like me, because obviously work that's common work or play. Or if you're just like going for a walk, you doing some exercising. That's not something I know anything about, but I know that people listen to things when they exercise. I do. a pair of raycon wireless earbuds in your ears can make all the difference sure can you get crisp powerful beats at half the price of other premium audio brands raycons look great and they feel even better they come in a range of cool colors and with customizable gel tips included for a comfortable in-ear fit yeah we're not going to mention the other brands but if you don't like the the hard crunchy one in your ear. Oh, you like these a, are you like gushy a, a fitted gush oh, in yeah. your ear. Who doesn't love a fitted gush? You might. <laughs> <laughs> Is that in the ad copy? Yeah. Fitted gush. It's in every ad copy. Oh, okay. Um, and Raycons are built to go wherever you go with a quick and seamless Bluetooth pairing and a compact charging case. Eric was just putting his back into his compact, it's pretty compact charging case. Oh, yeah. These are super great. The 24 hour battery life is amazing for me because I edit way too many hours. Way more than most. Um, it's super, super portable, super comfortable. And so when we're at a beach house in Santa Barbara, which we've been to a few times, and I actually have some surprise trips coming up for you, lovey. What? That I can't even talk about on this podcast because you'll barely know. get around the house. Well, I, you don't need to get around the house to plan some fun trips where I can just sit around in another house. That's true. Uh, and while I sit around the house, I will be using these. They're great for listening to anything you want to listen to. And I use them for podcasts, editing. Perhaps? Podcasts, perhaps? Podcasts, perhaps. So listen up, everyone. Raycon's offering 15% off all their products for my listeners. And here's what you got to do to get it. Go to buyraycon.com slash relax. There you'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order. And it's such a good deal. You'll want to grab a pair and a spare. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash relax. Buy, B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N.com slash relax. Check it out. Good job spelling, lovey. So guess what, love? Uh, What? I have something exciting to share with you. Why do you feel like you're being real? What? What do you mean? Why do you think feel like I'm being real? Am I usually fake? No. What does that mean? No, I just yeah, it it just my usually plastic. What do you mean? No, yeah, um, yes, I guess. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I was gonna say I was. um, So we're a little panicked about 
having twins. And so we're mm. going to talk about that a little bit. But I, I was looking into this because I am a little stressed about the future of our lives and having twins. So I looked. Are up, you surprising me by checking me into some sort of asylum? No, I found that's what I need. I know <laughs> I need it. Um, I found this funny article that was called 17 things only moms of twins will understand. And I think oh, that can apply that. to parents of twins because they're, you know, usually parents, not just moms when it comes to twins. That's uh, care sometimes. Too. Um, so I thought this would be fun to read and see how many things we relate to so far, even though we haven't had them yet. And I feel like the things we don't relate to yet will help us. Once we will like have a heads up on the things that we should be prepped for. You know what I mean? For sure. So yes. Give me an only, education, please. Only on twin this. moms understand these things. Okay. Number one says, <laughs> if you walk out of the house with two babies, people will ask how they were conceived. That's very weird. What they, do you mean? They're saying that everyone is ridiculously interested in knowing if you had IVF. Like if it oh, was like. It's so common with that. Yeah. yeah. So, but that's so awkward for me because. I didn't. So like people are going to be like, how did you conceive? I'm going to be like, I was with my husband. <laughs> I don't know. what. Like, how do I answer that? Like, I just uh, which, which had them. Or, or, or if it was some sort of like other like. Because um, like it's obvious. I, I didn't use any awesome, amazing, incredibly impressive uh, science to make my twins. It just yeah. I, I dropped two eggs from my uterus. Yeah, that's that was an interesting thing. So my my, my we haven't seen my parents since since the end of 2019 because of the pandemic and they're out here now we've been um visiting so we finally felt like it was a little bit safe enough and we were talking to them last night and i knew i was but it was, it was some breaking news here i am a product of yeah. of such um miracle drugs mm -hmm. um, because my parents desperately wanted more uh children and, did, and were told that they could not you know mm -hmm. what i mean without um and so i am a product of that mm -hmm. which yeah. is kind of crazy to be that. You know, what's cool is that like, since I have gotten pregnant this time, I've gotten really into, because I'm having twins, um, a lot of stuff, my for you page and my things that listen to me on my phone, um, come things come about, about twins. And because so many twins are from IVF, right. I get a lot of IVF information and like moms trying to get pregnant who are going through yeah. treatments. So I've learned so much yeah. about it in the last like few months and Same. so when your mom was talking about like the drugs she was on and the things she did i was i knew all whereas like i six months ago i didn't know any yeah, of that you knew information the exact drug i knew she exactly what it was yeah and i will say that i brought that up because my, my mother said um then that she was terrified mm -hmm. that she would it would be twins mm -hmm. um because they were going through that process mm -hmm. It wasn't. It was just super, super, just super you, super human me. Yeah, it's um, funny. I've yeah. All these I follow all these moms on um, moms and moms to be on TikTok who are trying to get pregnant right now because uh -huh. I just love following IVF journeys. Like, I think it's like so it's I'm so inspired by them and they're because like I just I don't know. It's just like the hardest thing ever when you're like desperately want to get pregnant and it, you keep getting disappointed. And so yeah, I'm like, we had a, like a very limited experience. So small, that, nothing like that nothing compared to. But like, I can't imagine. And so um, I just like I'm rooting for I follow everyone I can find. And I and they talk about what they're taking every single day and they show me their charts and they did like all this. I know everything about it. They check all this stuff. And, um, I, every day I'm like so eager to find out, like, did one of them get a positive test today? It's like, so I don't know. I'm like obsessed with it now. I like those, if you are out there and you've ever gone through all that, like you are a superhero to me. Wow. That so, so when you, when you're, when I'm. So when you take the babies out, out for a stroll, people gonna are going to be you, like, you broken. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No one's broken if they can't do that. <laughs> no, but you know, yeah. That, that, like, how did that happen? Cause like, it's, it is very rare, um, naturally. What's the, what's the, what should we know the statistic of that? Like how, I think it's how like, many pregnancies are like, are, um, I think it's like three in a hundred. I think I could be completely wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was like three or something. And out of a hundred. Yeah. So take it from us. That's definitive information. That is definitely made up uh, that I think I read it somewhere. So that's not correct information. Um, but I, what people do ask me when they find out I'm pregnant with twins is, are there twins in your family? Like immediately they're like, are there twins in your family? What? Mm -hmm. Like people are like, what the heck? And there are. Okay. Um, the next one is your maternity clothing sizes started at full term. You know how with one uh -huh. baby, women get asked if they're due any day now when they get all big at the end of their pregnancies. Moms of twins practically get asked this question five days after conception, <laughs> which reminds me we didn't do a bump check. Oh, 
<laughs> Boom, check. All right, love, you have to tell them what it looks like today. Okay. First of all, what are they covered in today? What are these twin babies covered in today? They're covered in a, a gorgeous vintage black t-shirt, our new Relax merch t-shirt. Here she comes. Wow. Look all at that. Right. Uh, we're seeing some top of it. We're seeing some bottom of it. Does it look like a bottom? There's like a, a, a pointy part <laughs> That's because my ass in the middle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to feel up. Oh, this is the belly button. We got an Audi, folks. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's a fun. New. That's a fun fact, by the way, with pregnancy, your abs split in half when you get pregnant. It's like the weirdest thing because they have to make room for baby, so they like split. It's so weird. I don't like it. Um, but anyway, there's your bump check of the day. Fun stuff. Bump check of the day. <laughs> Bum, bum, check of the day. Okay, I'm going to go to just the interesting ones on this little list here. But that one I do relate to. People already are like, well, you're huge. And I'm like, yes, thank you. Yeah. And it's like normally like you see a difference almost every day. Yeah, truly. Um, When we get up in the morning. Yeah, it's like. Whoa. Every day we're like, holy smokes, this is. And before my experience with any pregnancy, I, if I were to see you now, I would assume you were nine months pregnant. All right. Uh, one of these things what is, else you, got? you know that only you, moms of other multiples, and people binge watching Orange is the New Black truly understand the meaning of the word tired. Why binge watching Orange is the New Black? I don't get it. I don't get it. I've never <laughs> binge watched that show. Is that I binge I watched season it? one. People talk about how exhausting it is to, but like to compare binge watching a TV show to being a new mom is like not the move, you know? Um, people talk about how exhausting it is to be a mother of a newborn. We'll try doubling that. Now those late night feedings and diaper changes take an hour and a half and those babies are going to be hungry again in another 45 minutes. Welcome to hell. Everyone's super sleepy. Jeez Louise, the negativity, but that's yeah, funny. Yeah, that's what a lot that. of, since I've told friends, people that were having yeah. twins, they've all immediately responded, welcome to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, no I don't one has said that. <laughs> I didn't need to hear that. I need I like. I know that was I, so rude. I, well, I think that. Am I not already there? I don't, <laughs> no. Well, love. I'm just. I'm already so tired from. Um, it does. Flynn and the more. and the uptick in Flynn management since you've since you've been going through this mm -hmm. um, thing, that like the idea of being more. I, I feel almost like you've. Like I, 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 it is, I, I it wonder if it'll worse. like almost be easier once they're here. As crazy as that sounds, because like I feel like you've been sidelined mm -hmm. a bit, mm -hmm. like um, like we're on a sports team and you have been injured and you can't, you know what I yeah. mean. So I have to play I one think, on because Flynn d counts and count doesn't count as one person. Like Flynn is like a hundred. He's, he's like me versus a hundred people, um, in an amazing, exciting, yeah. energetic way. I think it is. I think you're exactly right. But like, here's what happened with Flynn. Like when Flynn was born, everyone was like, you are never going to sleep again. You're going to be so tired. Get your sleep in now. That's the worst thing to say to a pregnant woman, by the way, a very pregnant woman was like, make sure you're getting rested now because you're not going to sleep when the baby comes. Like, no, pregnant people don't sleep like we can't sleep. So like, that's so annoying. <laughs> don't say that. But like, I remember I was so miserable, so depressed, so much in pain. And then when Flynn came, it was it was very hard. Having a newborn is very hard. He had colic. It was very, very hard. But for me was a hundred times easier than being pregnant. And I remember at one point he was a few weeks old and we were talking about how hard it was. And I was like, but this is way easier than being pregnant. And you were like, what? No, it is not. This is well, way harder. I think that maybe that's like a, a blessing in disguise is that like, since pregnancies for you are so hard that like once the baby comes, uh -huh. I'm like, this is cake. That then that it's like, it takes a little bit of the edge off when you're then. Yeah. We'll continuing to not sleep. Two of them. I think, I think the hardest part is going to be having a toddler with babies. Like, I think that will be harder than dealing with babies is like, he'll be almost three. He's such an, an empath and he's such like a little, he wants to help mm -hmm. and he doesn't want to disappoint. Like, I think he's going to be awesome. That there will naturally be a bunch of like, um, attention driven issues, but at the same time, I think he will be an ally. Yeah. This, I hope so. In this, in this hell. In this, <laughs> it's in not this hell. hell. Here's the next <laughs> one. Once you figure out how to baby wear twins, you'll feel like superwoman. I feel like that's very true. Baby because what? Baby wear. You know, when you wear a baby, like with the wraps and things. Like, remember when you wore Flynn the first oh. time? You're like, I'm not using my hands and I'm holding this baby against my chest. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess like that makes you feel like, yeah. oh, you're going to be, it's going to feel really cool. You're going to like 
it's like a cooler accessory when it's two of them. I guess. I don't know. There's a lot of fun things. But, oh, this one's interesting. Doorways are the archways of the devil. After you get two car seats out of the car, haul them over to a doorway, set one down, open the door, put that baby inside out, walk back out, pick up the other baby, and then carry that one through the door. You'll never take walking through a doorway for granted again. And why don't all stores have automatic doors? What are we, animals? So what are these people? They're, there's not a stroller involved. They're just carrying. Well, like when you go from like your your car into like a doctor's appointment, you don't like. And also, I don't know, car seats. into I don't know. It just seems like when we carried Flynn in from the car into the house, uh -huh. we don't put him in a stroller. Yeah, it's we already bring in his car seat. Yeah. And now we're gonna have two car seats and a toddler trying to go into places holding two car seats at once. That's crazy. This is why I was saying a couple podcasts ago, <laughs> I need, I need, I need to be wearing two newborns on like some sort of like a belt, mm -hmm. and then have like a a belt. A, you have a uh, utility belt of children, yeah, and then like um, some sort of leash scenario to Flynn, mm -hmm. so that I can also hold a coffee mm -hmm. and open the door with keys. I think you just need an IV of coffee or something because uh -huh. you're not going to be able well, to hold one good, anymore. Like a like one of those um, those backpacks with the straw that goes. Oh through yeah, your mouth. or that yeah, that works. Um, uh, and yeah, there's. It, I'm still trying to make this hands free. <laughs> Here's another one. Sometimes this one's really hard for me. I'm like stressed about this one. I'm stressed. This whole podcast now is like, I'm, I, I thought it would make <laughs> are you me sweating? feel sweating? Why are I you thought sweating? thought it would make me feel better to like talk about, talk all this out. You know what it I mean? It makes me feel better. Sometimes it's better to say it all out loud, but I'm, I'm. It makes me feel so much better because there's been times where I like really have been beating myself up this pregnancy and to know that like this is all normal for twin pregnancies. Like what I'm going through is like made me feel so much better because like my pregnancy apps still, by the way, still tell me that like I might be showing soon. <laughs> and they're like, you might have to buy a bigger pair of pants soon. And I'm like, oh my God, I've gained 30 pounds already. So like the, to know that like what other twin moms and twin pregnancies are like helps me so much. Yeah. The good, the bad and the ugly, all of it is like, makes me feel okay. So like, I actually appreciate it all. I really like it, but you're having a hard time. No, yeah. it's it's like good. It's like relatable content for you. And it's like it's a it's a small it's like a niche. Yeah, it's like a niche group. So it's good to have find that like relatable stuff. It's hard you. to find. I'm just saying for me, I'm, I'm feeling um, my anxiety build as this episode goes on, like because it's. It's so real that all mm -hmm. of this is is coming and happening. It's really and like crazy. it feels like more rapid than the last. Time. Oh, yeah. It feels way the faster. Last time it felt like. Yeah, it it. it Time stopped. Time stopped as you as as you grew and all these things happened. Mm -hmm. um, towards, I just feel like wait, how, where you're you're already this, right? <gasps> <laughs> There's like, a, do you feel like a lumpy in there? Sorry, yeah. pause. I do. Yeah, no, don't pause. Um, um, we're sorry. I just felt the baby. Just say it out babies, loud. Yeah, I felt who I think is the girl moving around, and I did you write at that moment? I did at that moment, and I could feel her like I think it's the girl moving around, and so I grabbed Eric's hand and put it. You won't feel her kick. You, she's too little, but you could feel like her some sort of something. If you if you move your hand around, you'll feel gush, which is like all the other things, and then you'll feel like a hard hardness. How many like we should keep have a gush meter on the screen for how many times we've <laughs> we've said gush. I think in she this moved. Episode. I think she moved, but. Yeah. She was right there. That's where the girl is, I think. Yeah. This just, it all Sorry, seems to I be just happy. need Eric to feel the baby. Yeah. I, timeline wise, like in my brain, it just all seems to be like um, the other one felt like going uphill towards it. This one feels like we're just we're it's going. Yeah, it's really just, aggressive. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty it. intense. Uh, so this one, though, does stress me out a little bit. So, oh, so OK, <laughs> this uh -huh. one says sometimes one of the babies has to cry and you will feel no guilt about it. Moms of twins learn early on that they can't do everything for each baby all the time. I will never accept that. Yeah, I don't. I think that one will be very hard. That for one's going to be really hard for me. So sometimes yeah. one baby is going to lie on the floor and cry while you are taking care of the other baby. Initially, you'll feel bad about this, but eventually you will not give a single F about it. Which Whoa. that's aggressive. I don't know who wrote this article, but they have a lot of resentment and anger. What the hell, baby? <laughs> but that one, I really scares me because, like, I am one of those like really, like, I am a mama who's like, no, like, if you cry, like, it's because you you need to feel your feelings. But I will listen to your feelings and like, let's figure out the reason you are crying. I'm never like, oh, it's just a kid he's crying. Like, I've never done that with Flynn. It's like there's mm -hmm. always a reason I want to have him explain it. And I want to help if I can. And so the fact that there might be a baby crying 
that I can't do anything about because I'm like in the middle of feeding one or like, you know what I mean? Like that really freaks me out that I can't do everything for both babies all the time. That's going to make me crazy. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I feel that from like a different perspective, but like we were in Target the other day uh, last week and um, we had been in Target once a couple of years ago during an earthquake, this mm -hmm. same Target. And we were literally almost in the same spot where we were where we were in Target, just me and you, mm -hmm. during this earthquake where the whole Target shook and all the things were falling off shelves and the signs hanging from the ceiling mm -hmm. were swinging back and forth. And it's attached to a parking garage to where if sometimes people are, if you've ever been in a building like this, when they go down the parking garage, the building will kind of rumble and it could feel like what the beginnings of an earthquake is. Mm -hmm. And it was me, you, and Flynn. And I felt that. And in my body, since we were literally in the same, the same uh, spot, I felt like an earthquake was happening mm -hmm. and I re and you were over here and he was over here and I went I like literally like yeah I reached out. in both directions and but I didn't know I didn't know who to get to first my pregnant with twins wife or my two-year-old son and it was just a parking garage I was freaking out <laughs> uh, but uh <laughs> and so I I wondered uh I just I imagine I now I think about like how I will how I don't know that there will be one two three four you know what I mean mm -hmm. To, in it, all different it, directions yeah, as as someone who wants to protect and rescue and care for you all in any right circumstance like how so when you say like one baby will be will be left crying on the floor i'm like well i'm not gonna leave one kid behind in an yeah. earthquake and target well, obviously you know what not. I mean? yeah. no no but i'm just yeah i i think it's it's very overwhelming we never thought we'd be parents of three so i think yeah that's it um it's it's all very overwhelming and uh, very stressful. And this article, I think, just stresses out more. Thought it'd be fun. Maybe it's not. It was. Yeah. What? How did you start that? Like, you're like, this will this will be really helpful. What was the name of the article? I thought it'd be fun. It was like, like 17 things only parents of twins will understand. Yeah, just like a like it sounds like a fun Buzzfeed so title. Like, like only parents of oh, only and they moms both of barf twins. in your ears at the same time. Are you yeah. like some dumb thing? Or I don't yeah, know. and then it immediately like transferred to welcome Tim, to we're hell. Both like, <laughs> Is this episode and I need called to, like, Welcome to Hell? Change shirts because of sweat. Like, <laughs> well, you know what's well, not hellish, lovey. <laughs> you know what's not not making me feel like we should say Welcome to Hell. What's that? Daily Harvest, of course. Oh, it's time for our next for sponsorship. Harvest. When the weather gets warmer, you know, like in hell. <laughs> <laughs> when the weather gets warmer, the last thing I want to do is be all sweaty in my kitchen, cooking over a flame and hot stove. No. Thank you. But also, I, mean, I don't exactly want to order takeout for every single meal. You know what I mean? Just after every meal. Yeah. For my eighth meal of the day. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm obsessed with Daily Harvest. Daily Harvest delivers delicious harvest bowls, flatbreads, smoothies, and more, all built on organic fruits and vegetables right to your door. It takes literally minutes to prepare, and I love knowing that the food I'm eating is actually good for me. Daily Harvest never uses preservatives, added sugar, or anything artificial. My personal summer favorite is Daily Harvest Scoops. Hello, delicious. They're plant-based ice cream. It's also great because Flynn's obsessed with ice cream right now and I don't feel guilty letting him have some. It's so yummy. Scoops is the perfect sweet treat. Plus it's gluten-free and dairy-free. I personally love the chocolate ooey gooey midnight Ooh. scoops. That I, oh, give me that chocolate, the I thought fudge. You were I thought you were going to say gush there. I thought you were going to work gush into the box. I should have. They should well, have I myself had a mango papaya smoothie today that mm. was very... Delicioso. <laughs> Daily Harvest is all about leaving the earth in a better place than they found it. Not just for us, but for future generations to come, which I appreciate for our, all our little kiddos. So many they generations. Focus, I know. They focus on increasing biodiversity, investing in organic farming practices, reducing food waste, and even prioritizing recyclable and compostable packaging. Daily Harvest is delicious food, all built on whole organic fruits and vegetables that conveniently stay fresh in your freezer. So it's ready when you are. It's really the whole package. Stay cool, calm, and collected during the summer heat. Go to dailyharvest.com and enter code RELAX to get $25 off your first box. Whoa. That's code RELAX for $25 off your first box at dailyharvest.com. Dailyharvest.com. Okay. So, so. I, we don't get an, uh, often a chance like this to just sit down and just talk. I know. I feel as like much as we used to because... Um, Flynn doesn't really let us talk to each other, does yeah. he? I feel like this is the first time I've looked in your eyes in a week. Yeah, I feel a little bit intimidated by this <laughs> amount of eye contact with you. 
Um, because uh, at home in the car, if we start talking to each other. Oh, no. Some tugging at the leg and we'll hear mama watch. Mama, mama. mommy, mommy, mama, mama, mommy. What you doing? Dada, mommy, watch, what you doing? Dada, watch, 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 watch this, you be this, watch, dada, be, it, watch, be, be it, be it, be it, be it, be it, be a truck, okay, anyway. be a truck. Uh, and it's amazing and incredible, but how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know how I'm doing. We do talk at night and I'm not doing great, but well, I'm yeah, but very we, we talk about like why they're using a um, drill bow to start a fire on Naked and Afraid. That's true. Mm-hmm. And uh, and how are these people Why didn't still... they bring Flynn? Like, come on. Yeah. And how is this still happening on Big Brother season <laughs> after season? Uh, but I wanted to talk. So now you know, we know a little bit more about them. It's getting closer rapidly mm-hmm. that we will have three Oh, children so weird that's weird was that a voluntary burp as i, <laughs> I said just it, threw up a little think, bit in my mouth was there was that was that you almost <laughs> vomiting uh, no, when, I, really when i said aloud yeah that, yeah we'll have three children and i wondered um since like uh, would you be would you confess to being a workaholic a bit i would yeah and you're passionate about your job yes you let you in your career yeah which uh, this yeah. podcast is i guess part of mm-hmm. um uh that like I, i'm curious to what you envision it being like and how it operates as your partner um, when you are the mother of three children. You're going to be very busy. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah, I also try and do some stuff. Um, yeah, uh, obviously. But like, I just, I, I, for both of us, I'm, I'm really kind of curious, like you were, and also the pandemic has really kind of yeah. thrown a wrench into all of these things, as I'm sure it has for everyone listening, and I'm sure there are many um, parents of three children plus out there who do lots of things. Um, was that also, <laughs> was, that, was that holding in a yawn? I don't or a, know or anymore. A, or a bar- I never know um, if I'm holding in a burp or a yawn or a fart or but, uh, I don't know what's going like, on. I me. know you were, you were writing a book. I you was. Were, you were pitching a TV show and a movie. I was. Um, you had tour dates scheduled. I did. And then pandemic. Mm-hmm. And... That's ending question mark. I don't know. They just reinstated the mask mandate in LA. Yeah. Um, and you are pregnant with twins. Mm-hmm. So uh what's up? Well, here's a fun thing. I think Eric's like uh, obviously he's like, oh, maybe people will find it interesting for us to talk about this. But I think also Eric's asking because I want how to- Eric finds yeah. <laughs> out about my gigs is because in conversation with someone, like my mom will be like, are you touring anywhere? And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to Canada next month. I'm and like, Eric what? will be like, excuse me, we're going to Canada? <laughs> like, I'm not kidding. Is that not how you find out about all of my yeah, shows? Yeah, that and gigs? or like, there's like a big calendar, like big paper, like um, calendar, mm-hmm. like on the wall in our in our house. And, well, you didn't see the calendar? It's, I'm, yeah, I'm not <laughs> like, like. I go, it's on the calendar. I always say. You'll yeah. write something or Corey will write something on the calendar. And then like, it's, it's as if that means it's, uh, what's, it's, what, what's the word? when I don't know. Because it is, it does mean it's happening. If it's on the calendar, it's happening. Right. Yeah. Um, it's well, set in stone, um, so to speak. Yeah. It's, it's set in paper on our wall in, in mm-hmm. ink. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, I think that's part of the reason pregnancy is so hard for me is because it forces me to not be a workaholic. And so part of the thing that gets me through pregnancy is knowing that when I'm not pregnant, I can do it again. I can work again. Okay. Um, so. <laughs> okay. So that, well, you have, you have a, a, a live show coming yes. up at the end of this month, a live show online. Yeah. So if, if you're listening to this. It's July 31st. So we can have from the day this episode comes out. Uh huh. I have a live show, a virtual live show. How's that? How's that going? It's not how's going great. Going? It's not going great. I I really did not anticipate this pregnancy to be. Um, I knew it would be hard. I knew it was going to be really hard. Yeah. But I didn't know because with my last pregnancy, I had no choice. I had like, I had things planned. I was going to be on the Colbert show. I was going to be on Ryan and Kelly. I was doing a book tour. I was doing a bus tour. I was filming my live. Um taping of my comedy show for Netflix at the Kennedy Center. Like these things were scheduled before I got pregnant. And so you you had to do that. So I had to do that. And during that time, I was away for a month doing a movie and we had, Mm -hmm. yeah, there was all kinds of things going on. So like I had to do those things. And so I know that I am capable of being pregnant and doing an insane workload because I did it. Yeah. I almost died, but (laughs) I did it. Yeah. And this time it's, if that were my schedule, I would have to cancel it. Like, there's no question. It's like that. Okay. So um, even this live show that's happening next week, I'm like, 
oh my God, how am I going to do this? Because I can't go an hour without having to like, I have to stop what I'm doing to breathe. Like even if I'm just sitting watching a television show, I'll randomly just start like panting like I ran a marathon. Yeah, how do you work that into a show or snacks? I'm gonna have to. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, I don't know. I think pregnancy, I have to just, after this live show, I have to just stop. I have to stop. I, I can't try to do anything else. Well, don't you think it's enough to be um, growing uh, two humans inside your body? Is that like, don't you think as, a, as an accomplishment in just life in, in this human experience, don't you think that's This is a, something I'm working enough? on in therapy. Is well, it really? Yeah, it is. Because I, um, I do, th I think everyone is different. And I think that um, it is a huge accomplishment and it's amazing that I'm growing two humans inside of my body. And that's really cool and really crazy and mind blowing. But um, that's not my passion in life. My passion is being a mom and like I'm excited to like meet them and be their mom. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't, that's not, if I could pick what I want to do every day, it's not being miserable. Yeah, it's <laughs> While not, I grow it's two not, people. It's not, not something like, I'm like excited just, to do. Just in, endure, right? You, yeah, it's, it's, I feel like I'm surviving. I'm like literally yeah. like, like every day is like, okay, let's get through the day. And I, it, I know it's the same for you right now. Like it's, it's true, like, yeah it's we're surviving right now. It's not like, oh, what can we do in a couple months? It's like, can we get through, can we get through this hour? Like I can't move, I can't breathe, I'm in pain. How am I gonna get through this hour today? And so I'm literally emotional. No, it's okay, that's okay. I needed to take a second because I'm emotional for no reason. And I get like really disappointed in myself when I think about how I'm not capable of doing anything right now. So. I should have taken a second to cry for a minute because I'm but we're so we're talking about lame. how you have a show in two weeks. And, and yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to do the show. It's going to be fun. I've been writing songs and like. You have a video that comes out every day. You yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, this podcast and uh, you're beautiful. And, uh, <laughs> no, I don't need anything like that right now. And like you have tour this dates. Is, this is, there's two babies in me and in, an insane amount of hormones. And. I feel not like myself at all. It's really weird because you are totally right. I'm a complete workaholic. That's like one of the top. If you ask anyone to describe me. I don't mean me, that in a bad way. No, I, mean, I don't. I, I don't take it as a bad thing. I don't know what kind of connotation that has other than as a compliment to you. Is like no, this I agree. Creative um, I energy totally agree. force. In, and, uh, yeah, let me just say this. Sure. So I agree with you. That I think that's if you ask anybody to describe me. That would be like one of the first words they would say, like and me included. I like I love that. I love you, my job you love and I love it, yeah. it. And so when you have when you take the biggest parts of someone away from them, you feel like, who am I? You know, like, so the fact that I cannot be a workaholic right now is very hard for me. Gotcha, yeah. That's what I was trying to get to. So um, so I am excited for when the babies come because I get to meet them and be their mom and uh, experience life with them. I am stressed because I want to continue to work. And so I'm like, how do I work with three kids? Like uh, people do it every day. There's a lot yeah. of people listening who and do we'll this with more. We will figure it out. But yes, I do have a tour planned <laughs> for after the babies come, which is insane. And I've told family members this and they're like, you have to cancel that. And I'm like, absolutely not. So I, I don't think you should because you love to do it so much. I, and I, I think that we will just figure it out. I think I, so of too. Of course we will. Um, but, to, but I would like, we're not going to deprive you of that. Of course. And when I want to happiness, I also like, it was really hard with Flynn to tour with Flynn. I toured a lot with Flynn. We did a bus tour. We were on trains. We lived in hotels. We lived, I mean, I mean that kid, it was so hard, but in retrospect, like it was such a blast and like how and, cool to tell him about yeah. when he's older and those, and you were amazing on stage every time I saw and you. Also and also really, that empowering and fulfilling like really yeah. hard very hard i had a lot of meltdowns you know a lot of tears it was I very see, I difficult i don't remember that part i don't i just <laughs> see, i just remember I being in we in cool new places every day with you and him and uh being backstage uh just being in the wings holding him like pointing you being like yeah. that's mommy and he was just like Bleh. like just, right <laughs> just <laughs> drooling yeah <laughs> um yeah and so like so cool. it, i've never felt M like more proud of myself because that was so hard like to be able to get through that so like i definitely want to tour again once i have kids and i do have tour dates planned 
for 2022. Yeah, there are there like there are they on the calendar? They're not on the calendar, but they <laughs> no, are. They're, they're on. Not, then they're not real. <laughs> And they're not real. They are on the calendar in my mind. They're on the calendar in my on my computer and in contracts. Have those, have those come out? Yeah, are those public? They're not public, okay. no. But like there are d- tour dates I had this year that I obviously cannot do because they push to next year. That they're pushing to next year. And we've added a couple for next year. Um, nothing too strenuous. I'm not doing like a big bus tour or anything like that. But like I I mean, after the whole year and a half of pandemic not per- touring, and then now a year of like no, we got a really get you hard ba- pregnancy. We gotta I'm get like, you back I gotta out do there. it again. Yeah, and so. if you've never seen, if you've never been lucky enough to see this woman on stage, it is pretty miraculous. And uh, I don't know what it will be next year. It's my favorite live event I've ever seen is you performing live. I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, "Holy wow!" I think you're it's my. I think thing. like I never knew anyone. Like my mom is my biggest fan. Like my mom is at my shows. Mm. No, listen, listen. She'll I, fight let me, me for this. Yeah. Let me finish. She, she was. I was gonna get to that because like my mom at any show she comes to is sitting right in the wings. Like she doesn't miss a second. She's seen my show, my live show, a billion times. Like she's like the biggest like supporter of all her kids. I'll she's like the tallest. And I never knew. I've never known anyone in my life who felt that way about my live show because there no one else is my mom. And then. Eric came to a live show and stood in the wings and watched the whole thing. And then was like, that was amazing. And was so complimentary and kind. And then like, every time you ever came to a show, you did that. And I was like, why is he watching from the wings every time? And ev- after every show, he's like, he remembers, he writes down his favorite parts. He like, oh, yeah, writes down his favorite yeah, improvs keep, like, and, notes on my and like, phone, just like, like gushes about how, like you are the, my biggest fan. Like yeah. I really do think like after I was like, I had never thought I'd meet someone who was a bigger fan of my live show than my mom. Um, my favorite was like finally getting to like sneak out to like the back of an audience and mm-hmm. watch like watch like in it like that oh, was yeah. like kind of lurking in the back yeah. of one of your shows. I, I've done that a couple times and that is it's it's wild. And, it's I, so and I, obviously also like I've been able lucky enough to um, to be invited to walk out on stage with you. Mm-hmm. As, audience loves it's I think always mostly as, part. as the character from from Haters Back Off. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Well, my plan is to tour and my plan is to, I have so many ideas for movies and TV shows that I've written in my head. I started writing a book that I never finished. Um, What what was that? It was, I don't want to say because if, I don't know if I'll ever finish it. I don't know, but it's, it's different than the Miranda books. So it's not a Miranda book. It involves Miranda, but it's not like one of my other two books. But you don't want to say? I don't think so because I don't, I don't know that I'll ever I don't know. Well, I know what it is. I know what the title is. Don't say it. Okay. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, I um, think you should, I should think you should continue to write this But I have book. so many, like, so many ideas of things that I want to do. And it's important to me. This, I'm so emotional. I'm so sorry. I don't know what they're growing right now, but they're growing something that makes me very emotional. It happens all the time. And whenever I have, like, a symptom, I'm like, what are they growing? Are they growing brains, lungs? Like, what's growing right now? For some reason, while we're filming this podcast, I'm extremely emotional. So just excuse my tears. But it's really important to me for me to be able to go back to work because it's a big part of who I am to be able to perform. I don't think I could find like my true sense of self and happiness if I just let go of my passion and my dreams. Yeah. And you don't have to. And I'm not going to. Yeah. Yeah, But 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 this this time is finite. It's going to, you know what I mean? I know that. Yeah. yeah. So what what I was going to say, and that makes me emotional is that like, it's not only important to me to do that for me, it's really important to me to do that for my kids. I need them to see that. You You set that example. Yeah. Yeah, I need them to see that. That's that's really, really really incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I'm so emotional. You're making me Because I'm thinking about my daughter. Like, I, you know, it's important for my sons, but, but boys do get taught that they can go after those kinds of things and girls, it's harder for girls. Yeah. And so to show my daughter that she could be a mom and, and also go after her dreams. Sorry. It makes me so emotional. You're making me emotional. (laughs) But I've seen so many moms give up everything for their kids and it's so incredible and amazing. And, um, to show my daughter that like she can go after her dreams and also be a mom and my boys that they can go after their dreams and also be a dad like you, like is really important to me. So as hard as it's going to be, like, you know, I can't give up on it. Sorry guys. This is so, I'm just, no, don't, I'm not I, looking I, for like yeah. any of the years. This is not like a, Oh no, Colleen's so sad. This is like, I'm literally just emotional. I'll be eating Taco like Bell that. in 10 minutes. Like it doesn't sound like that at all. I think it's, um, I think it's like, it's cool. It's it's cool that you're that 
to have this kind of personal conversation. And, and, <laughs> it's so and weird. And, and genuine. Um, yeah, it's 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 been really hard not working the last couple of years. And um, I'm very excited to go back to work. I'm very excited to tour. I'm very excited to write a new TV show or a movie and, you know, hopefully win the lottery in some way that someone wants to make it again because I already got to do that and that was a miracle yeah um if I get to do that again that'd be awesome but even just to try to do it what is important to me so we'll see what happens but right now my job is to just cry a lot and <laughs> grow babies so that's what I'm doing right now well I think you're doing amazing and I think that's that's a lot you know? yeah it's it is a lot obviously I am a mess so one thing that everyone should know is that Eric is the a super superhuman super dad super husband. Am very I the next sponsor? <laughs> Eric is the next sponsor. No, I paid for an ad to get you just to, <laughs> to say nice things about me. No, no. Um, uh, but I just you hear a lot of things once you get married and start having kids. Like everything is like, oh, dad, like dads don't do anything, or like talking about lazy dads, or like I don't know, like. There's like if you look up like search on Amazon like a T-shirt for new dad. It's like arm goes in this hole for a baby T-shirt. Well, I it's am like, always playing golf and going to Vegas with my friends. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, <laughs> but just like saying he is so but involved. Can I, can I go? Sure, to go for country. it. You can do whatever you want. He is so involved and he's so attentive and so wonderful and amazing. And he also, um, you know, has has altered his life so much to be a dad and a husband and your life is going to change abruptly too. And so I want to get into the same conversation, but reverse with you. So we're going to do that first. <laughs> I want to say thank you to our next sponsor. Let's do it, yeah. <laughs> um, so you guys, everything's starting to kind of open up. This pandemic is kind of like, you know, ending ish sort of hopefully, but like, you know, things are opening up restaurants and bars Two steps forward, and one step concerts. Back. I've, I'm seeing all, this is the biggest thing. All my friends, I'm seeing them announcing their tour dates. I'm like, oh, people are touring. So, so Broadway's so exciting. opening. So exciting. So all these fun things are starting to happen. You know, we can start going to concerts and movies and, and all these fun things. And the post office, oh, oh. not so much. Who wants do to do need that? To go back Come there? on. Some parts of normal life aren't so great. But with stamps.com, you can skip trips to the post office and save on postage. Mail and ship anytime, anywhere, right from your computer. You can send letters, send packages, and pay less, a lot less, with discounted rates from USPS and UPS. Stamps.com saves businesses thousands of hours and tons of money every year. I love Stamps.com, guys. I'm always shipping stuff out you for are. my job. Corey and I have to use it constantly. It is so helpful. I'm always returning things I bought on the internet that I definitely <laughs> didn't need and don't realize it till I get here. It is so helpful. Yes. Um, we we love it and we strongly recommend that you guys check it out too. Stamps.com brings the same U.S. postal and UPS shipping services right to your computer. They make it easy for small businesses to mail and ship without needing to take a trip to the post office. You print official U.S. postage and shipping labels 24-7 without having to leave your desk or buy any fancy equipment. All you need is your computer and a standard printer. Once your mail is ready, you just schedule a pickup or a drop off. It's that simple. No more hassle of the freaking post office, guys. Stamps.com is a no brainer, saving nearly 1 million small business owners like you time and money. They offer deals you can't get anywhere else, like up to 40% off USPS and up to 66% off UPS shipping rates. 66%? Yeah, very specific. very specific. And with their switch and save feature, you can quickly compare carriers to find the best rates every time. Stop wasting time going to the post office and go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with my promo code RELAX, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in RELAX. That's stamps.com, promo code RELAX. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. Wow. I love stamps.com. Lovey. Too. Now let's talk about you. Stamps. Do you need to cry? I know. I feel like <laughs> I feel like now you're gonna try and make me Do you need to cry. How are I you feel feeling like today? <laughs> just the idea of you saying that, I'm this close. Cause I feel like that's how I feel. I know. Too. I feel on it like on that yeah. kind of edge too. On that there's that like razor's edge of like, am I gonna laugh or cry at right. this moment? Um, because of just uh 
exhaustion and right. um and feelings and anticipation and uh well and you have to take a, you're taking a lot of extra duties here because i'm i'm really immobile already guys it's really like i'm really not doing well so you have you're a really super dad right now and and yeah and i don't i don't mind that. that um but it does it is it is what it is you know are you I mean? stressed like, about like um what's gonna happen when they come with like your work because you are currently on a television show yeah and we're waiting to find out if it's we're getting more seasons of this television show yeah, and, and, if, uh, yeah, and if your character will right. be on it and all these um, things or if there's other shows or, or there's other but you're constantly auditioning I, for yeah. stuff and yeah uh, yeah it takes it's it's a it's very long hours mm -hmm. right when you film a tv show they generally start um very early mm -hmm. and they work very long days mm -hmm. not that other jobs don't as well i'm just saying mm -hmm. it's it's not uncommon to it's go over a, a 12 hour work day yeah. for uh for filming a show and then and for an hour long series that has 20 episodes. You probably shoot for nine months out of the year. Um, and the schedule is, is, is fluid. So it's, it's, you're kind of on call a bit. Like it can, it's different every week and it can change and you can have one week where you're working every day. It's one, you know what I mean? So it's kind of unexpected or unsure in that part. So it's, and it's, um, it's one that comes home with you because there are, there's work to be done when you're not there, like memorizing and um, mm -hmm. getting to know the thing in person that you are. Uh, so it's it's very involved, and it's and it's a I don't want to say like narcissistic profession, but it is like so a soul. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like a one man. Like you know, you're. Uh, how do I phrase this? It's it's not it's not narcissistic, it's not ego driven, but it's like it's just you, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And like um and it's you putting yourself out you're your own business, I guess, is mm -hmm. a way to put it. And so and that's how it always has been. So to like put a a a, a partner into it, like that's great and that's and that was helpful. And then to put a son into it, it it's, it takes a lot of time. But now three, I feel energy wise overextended at this point. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know how there is room for more, but I think there, like, as we found with Flynn, there is like a, another gear, so to speak, that you didn't know you had mm -hmm. that it was like, Oh, I just shifted into this other gear that like, I, I always thought I needed eight hours of sleep to function. And now I'm like, Oh, I just need six. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if after if that, twins, <laughs> yeah, and I don't even, don't, <laughs> don't even stretched. get that. That's a, that's like, if that's on a good night, Oh my God, I got six hours of sleep mm -hmm. to towards, towards before. My whole life, I could barely function if I didn't get eight. Oh, yeah. Like I was an eight-hour person. Yeah. Um, and now I'm wondering if after the twins, I'm gonna be like, hey, I got three hours of sleep last night. Yeah. And I and I will be like, that's incredible, and I'm super high functioning. Um. But yeah, I don't know. I I wonder. That, you know, like life is short, and and this to me is my this to me this mm -hmm. thing seems to be like my main is i mean it is it's my main priority you know yeah. what i mean so if it if that being family or your job yes caring yeah. caring for my for my now growing mm -hmm. family and so and that's i that's to me that's the that's the juice you know what i mean mm -hmm. and so like if 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 it takes away from the other to be able to to focus on this you know what i mean whether that's short term or i don't know like that's totally okay with me mm -hmm. um yeah, it's yeah. Sorry, there's lots of pausing and yeah. I don't know. No, but like, yeah, I, did you ask a question or did I just start talking? <laughs> yeah, just like you're trying to get me to cry. <laughs> you're close. <laughs> no, just like don't I don't know why. But yeah, well, like I said, I think that like part of parenting and this family being like your priority, I think that's part of it is doing what you love and having those things for you, because if I think I, even our doctor, by the way, our doctor said this to you the other day and made you like feel like choked up she was like are you doing anything for you like yeah you there's that, that's and that's really important a, a couple times like there's like i've had this strange almost guttural reaction to where um and it's infrequent that it happens because like you're the one you know carrying two children you know you're doing the hard work you're doing the heavy you're carrying the heavy load but like i and i really yeah um and i'm just and i'm here surviving with you mm -hmm. day by day with you um but like yeah it, it is strange 
when someone asks me my reaction, when, when they ask me, how, how, am I, how are you doing? Well, how are you doing? That my reaction is like, oh, fine. my reaction has never been like, oh, yeah, I'm fine. You know what I mean? Like, she's like, she's crushing it. It's hard, whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Like any kind of normal human reaction that anyone else say, well, how are you doing? Like when someone asks me, like, well, how are you doing? I mean, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Someone asked me, someone asked me how I'm doing. Like, I, uh, I, uh, like, I don't know. It's not a, it's not an easy answer. It's Mm -mm. not like a simple and it's, and for me, it's so like this experience and like how tired, you know what I mean? All of this goings on in the world. Like it's all, it's that like, it's not like it, it's not like an easy, like I'm fine. You know, and like you ask, like you, you see someone you haven't seen in a while or a friend. Hey, how's it going? You know, oh, great, great, great. Like you just say great. Of course mm-hmm, you say mm-hmm. great. Like, and who's like, and they don't want to know more. No. And now when someone asks me that, I can't just say I'm great. You know what I mean? I can't like, it's because I, I mean, I am, I mean, I am, but like I, yeah, there's a, there's, it's so much more layered. Mm-hmm. It's a tiramisu of like, of feelings. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a cake with layers, right? A tiramisu, yeah, yeah, it's like an Italian, like oh, it's so good. And there's, but I'm just saying there's, there's two, espresso yeah. I'm saying powder. That on I was, top. I was like, is this a metaphor, or am I just yeah. naming a cake that it doesn't fit it the layers. metaphor? Um, yeah, and our doctor, who normally when we go to this doctor, like I go with you, and she's just mm-hmm. asking you questions about your health and your things and what's going mm-hmm. on with you and how we can make this better, more manageable for you. You know what I mean? It's all about you and let's look inside you. Let's see the Mm -hmm. babies inside you. Mm -hmm. And then like, and that's all it's been. I mean, Mm -hmm. I've gone with you every week for 16 weeks, Mm -hmm. not 16 weeks. 17. Yeah. Um, And then for some reason, this, this, one of this last times, she like all of a sudden turned to me, made eye contact with me and was like, and how are you? And I was like, like, you know, well, and you, well, you did answer quickly. Like, I'm okay. You know, you, you answered quickly. uh And then, and that's when she was like, you need to make sure you're doing things for you. Like she's your hobbies and do your things you love. What I love about her is she's a bit also life coachy. Like you can tell that that's, (laughs) that's in her, not a profession that I understand or have ever, Mm -mm. um, needed their customer service a life coach um but she i think is that for me now i don't know because like i was just like i'm okay and then yeah she went into like well what are you like it'll make you a better father yeah. if you have things that are that are you are doing for you right and that and that'll be mileage in your yeah in your fatherhood and just even considering that to me was like oh uh, yeah i don't know yeah um, and i think you i think that day or the next you like went to the mall or something alone and but but this is so t- uh, the best plant nursery is what well I did. you also yeah. went to a mall and this is the exact this is a perfect testament to eric is that like he went to go like have me time for an hour like literally was singular hour and came back with presents for me and flynn <laughs> that's what you did during your me time i was like who is this person yeah best. i guess i hadn't been to a mall in like two years and i, I guess they let you just walk around them now strange i know, I know. Um, yeah, I'm gardening more, <laughs> uh, and, uh, a lot of trying to fix things around the house. It's a lot of rescuing, me- rescue missions with Flynn. A lot of, uh, I got my Paw Patrol tattoos on today. We've got over here an excavator and a crane truck. Mm-hmm. I'm having, I'm having a blast hanging out with him and, uh, and enjoying that. And, yeah. uh. And surviving. Yeah. And uh, you just, I guess I'll just take like, um. Audition by audition, and we'll figure it out. Just like same with you, like we'll just mm-hmm. figure it out, right? Like, what else can we do? Yeah, I think that's life. But I'm, is- I, I'm very, I feel very full. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm not Me like too. I'm not like at the table being like, well, well, like let's order another, let's order dessert. Like I don't, I'm full. I don't need dessert. And I think I'm that at a point sense. right now where I'm like, I'm very full, but I also need the tiramisu with all the layers and a chocolate cake and uh, an eclair. And I want to order all the things, even though I'm too full right now. Yeah. And so then I cry because they don't fit. Are we, are we just hungry? <laughs> I, I think, actually am starving. I think I'm we not might, kidding. <laughs> we might just be hungry. And these are go, hunger tears. We're starving. I'm starving. I actually am like really hungry. So I think I'm going to go eat something. But thanks for listening to this bizarre episode of no, Relax. No, I think it was uh, one of our most intimate. That sounds intense. Is that what this one's called? 
Welcome to hell, the intimate episode. <laughs> Welcome to hell, like the intimate that. episode. <laughs> I like that. Anyway, we love you guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for our yeah, producers, thanks. TJ and Chris and Audio Boom and all our wonderful sponsors. We hope you guys have a wonderful day. We have this t-shirt. And you can get up this t-shirt. It's very cozy. And all the things. We love you. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Thanks for listening. You can relax. Lena and Derek have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our homes. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast.